and that is why the Premier League is the best in the world. A dramatic 4-2 win for Arsenal here against Aston Villa to send them back to the top of the table in what could be a massive game in the context of the title race. Pisa, how do you sum up that second half? That was unbelievable, honestly. It was, uh, it was end-to-end. At one time, you thought Villa might win it. You know, it was a great save from Ramsdale onto the bar, which kept them in it. Got, got to mention Ramsdale and then... Uh, you know, they just kept, they keep answering the, the questions that are asked of them. I think a lot of people have been talking about Arsenal's character. Can they sustain this title challenge? And um, they answered the questions today. They did. They needed to answer the questions in the second half as well, Martin. They were 2-1 down. Let's have a look at how Oleg Zinchenko equalised for them for the second time. You, you saw those two players being interviewed at the end of the game and they wanted to get back into that dressing room because they have a feeling for the club and they're champions. They know what it takes and both their goals have got Arsenal now back into a really good position here. Sinchenko initially, um, he, sits, he takes up these really clever positions. I mean, this is him on the edge of the box and you're thinking, well, where's he going to go next? So he decides just to just drift across into this position. Right Shouldn't side. be allowed to do it though, Mark. No, I mean, how much pace he's got. Villa are looking at him, but nobody really deals with it. And he's thinking, OK, you know what? I'm just going to hit this near post. And it's a really sweet, look at the Villa players, look. They, they, they got no the one, they're pointing at him, but nobody's reacting. It really yeah. is poor, though. There should be somebody on the edge of the box, Joe. I've never known that. You always have someone there. You think, as a shot comes in, watch who gets there first. Your, you should, your number one header of the ball, Tyrone Mings, has had to leave his space and yeah. be the first one. It's, I think that's a lack of... Um, that's a lack of organisation. Definitely. Like, but he exploits. Yeah. When he sees a, pro, you know, a hole, a gap, he runs into it. Um, and that is a really important goal for his team. And they really needed Aaron Ramsdale as well, didn't they, in that mm. second half? He made a couple of really good saves, especially Pisa, that one from, from Leon Bailey. Yeah, I mean, that was the one, wasn't it? I mean, it, it could go either way, that game. It was really, really end-to-end. -end, but Leon Bailey, as you say, comes on and uh, he was needed to pull out a save. But if you're going to be up there, um, you need your goalkeeper to perform. And he's been brilliant this season. Mm. So, so important for them. He, he's had... Particularly good performances away from home for them yeah, as well. Massive character, Linz. You know, he gets a hand on it. You don't see it quite clearly from that angle. It's a lovely, it's a strong hand near post. Look, that's a match saving. Right, so. That's as important as the Zinchenko goal or the Jorginho goal. You know, he, he, I think he's so important for this team. I think he's England's number one now. I think he's. I, I, I really do be. think he's now getting into that territory. His character, I mean, here he doesn't really panic. You know, he just makes a save there across. You expect him to save that. But he, I just love the way he is as a team player. He's a real leader. He plays behind two really young central defenders. So in that triangle of three, mm. there's no real experience, but they're growing in, in maturity every time you watch them. And that today is really important for them. Because as you said, Joe, about healing the team, I'd sooner if they win this game today 4-2 in the manner they did than win a comfortable 3-0. It tells me more about the group and the character and the goalkeeper's got that in abundance. Yeah. And so much drama in stoppage time as well. Yeah. Emmy Martinez with an own goal to make it 3-2 yeah. for Arsenal. But, but all Jorginho as well in that yeah, one. Yeah, I mean, we watched Martinez doing lots of uh, time wasting. So that's why the game went into a thing. But Jorginho, he just cuts across it. Hits it smooth and then it's bittersweet because Martinez was really riling the Arsenal fans up in front of us and it comes back off his head. But as it comes, I think the next angle is going to look this one just off his face. It's a horrible way to yeah. consider the goal, but the way that Jorginho struck it was. How beautiful. did you feel about that, Martin? Because I know the time wasting from Martinez was just frustrating it was, I you. I thought you through it was that. ironic. I seem to have spent a whole hour watching him wasting time. And then for it to come off his head, look, it was a great prayer for Arsenal, maybe he shouldn't have gone. But look what it means now to the next generation. Look, Jorginho coming in, scoring that goal. Um, so, no, I, it's really ironic that, you know, he should waste that amount of time and then eventually it comes off his head, but that can happen. And then that goal from Gabriel Martinelli, Pisa, was that just the icing on the cake for them, on the counter? It was, you know, Martinez has gone up again and uh, you have to credit Vieira here, you know, coming on and uh, he didn't panic. I mean, he could have gone for goal there. I know plenty of people that would have done uh, yeah. on the left foot, you know, but he plays the pass perfectly through. Hassan's come in and played his role today. Martinelli sat back, he's come on, he's made a difference. You know, then all of a sudden you've got four players out attacking three with Jesus to come back five, all on form all scoring goals, all confident. They've just come back and had an incredible win away from home. It brings the group back together. Title race is back on. And we all know how important that win was in, in Arsenal season by Martin's reactions during that game. He's given me a bit of a headache today, haven't you? Yes, just passion. Oh, take that. Take that. Take that. <laughs> come on, go. Oh. Yes! Yeah! Get in there!
Zinchenko. Come on, son. Come on, son. Have you seen him throw animations? That's our ball. Come on, ref, ref. No! No! Is he seen that? It's not possible. He's guessing. He's guessing. I hope so. Oh! Oh! Please! Hit it! No! <laughs> you had a hundred games of Villa, didn't you, Martin? <laughs> I have to apologise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> I had no idea the camera was on me, clearly. <laughs> it's the perfect goal of the keeper. Chris, it's, it's come off the keeper. <laughs> Yeah. That, that was Villa legend Martin Keown there. Very sorry, guys. Very sorry. But <laughs> Martin, does that just sum up all how important that, oh, that victory was today? I can't tell you. I mean, today. it would have been so deflating if they'd have, you know, dropped more points again today. So coming back from being behind, the performance, the way that gels, it's going to be a great coach journey returning back to the training ground. Mm. And it reinforces that belief that they can take Man City to task. And City, we know, are quite brilliant. Of course, they're favourites. But Arsenal now having a real say in who's going to win it. Yeah. Did they deserve it today, yes. Arsenal? Yes, they think? did, Linz. Like we spoke to the manager there, Mikel, before the game, and he want, he wanted a response. And so often, like I've been critical of, of Arsenal over the last 10, 10, 12 years, where I felt they've 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 had big situations, big opportunities, and and they've tripped over themselves. You know, whether it be a, a question of character, things like that. But today. This team, every now, every time you see them play, they're answering questions. All credit to this team. Yeah, lots of questions being asked of the Arsenal players and they have delivered for their manager today. Let's hear now from Mikel Arteta with Becky Ives. Mikel, congratulations. Was that just Thank a you. lesson from your team in never giving up? Absolutely. We showed a lot of characters resilient to get back twice on the game and, and end up winning it and we have to take some lessons from today because especially in the first half we didn't do all the simple things right and then um, you give them the chance to score those two goals in, in a really simple way but we talked at half time if we raise the individual standards and start to do everywhere what they have to do we're going to win this game and they went out which is difficult and, and win it. Well you spoke there you went behind after five minutes which clearly wasn't in the game plan what didn't quite work in that five minutes? Well, the way, obviously, we give the ball when we are completely open and leaving that left channel to Watkins one against one. Um, we knew that that was a big concern. He's got this quality to do that. And uh, and they took, I think they had two shots and they scored two goals. Uh, so credit to them for that. But in the second half, I think we overplayed them. I think we created chance after chance. We dominated absolutely the game. And uh, we needed a magic moment and Jorginho produced it. Well, it was an incredible goal. Have you ever seen a goal scored like that before? Especially not from him. He's got many, many qualities, but probably that's not his biggest strength. But uh, he was so much into the game and, uh, and the boys really wanted it. And especially what happened a few days ago. And uh, we are so pleased to win the game. Zinchenko as well, getting his first Premier League goal. Proud of him? Yeah, it took him too long. So he's been practicing on that. And I'm so happy for him because obviously he had a difficult action in the first goal when he gave the ball away, but he reacted really well. Do you sometimes find more values in wins like today where you've had to come from behind twice than what you do cruising 3-0 winners? Well, you want to be at the top, you're going to have win, to win games in many different ways. You're going to have to score goals in the 94th and sometimes play with 10 men and, and come back results and to do it, especially against this team in this stadium. A lot of credit to the boys. And I can imagine the dressing room right now is bouncing. Is it fair to say? It was absolutely bouncing because it was a big effort to play less than 72 hours ago after the game that we had and, and after the result that obviously morally is, is touching. But uh, really pleased with the boys. And now can you use this to just pick up where you left off, forget about the last couple of results and move it's forward? picked up, look it again and, and train really well on Monday. That's what we have to do. Lovely. Mikhail, thank, thank you. you. The dressing room bouncing, he said, I'm sure the, the bus will be bouncing all the way back to London as well. Martin, did the performance not even really matter today? They just had to get the win. Performance always matters. But I think this manager really doesn't quite get enough credit because he's made some really big calls since he's been in charge. Lots of players come and gone from the and he today, bringing the substitutes on, continuing to try and play his football with Zinchenko. We wondered if he's going to change that slightly. Should he have gone wider to create a 2v1? But no, it was him that in those central positions. Um, and he keeps finding the extra ingredients for his team because he's driving them on and he's the driving force. He's got that belief um, and that will only endorse that now in that journey home back to, to London. Absolutely, and Aston Villa made them fight for it today as well, didn't they? They went ahead twice. Ollie Watkins scored within five minutes. We can hear from him with Becky. 
Ollie, are you wondering how that ended up 4-2 at the end of that game? Yeah, I think um, similar to the Leicester game, really. You know, we, we've had a good start, um, gone in front, they've scored, we've scored again. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know what happened, really. Um, it's one of those games where you, you look back and you have to look back and, and go over it, but in the moment you don't really know what happened. Um, a good team like Arsenal, you know, punish, punished us at the end of the day. And um, yeah, I don't know what really went wrong. Is it disappointing not to be able to see the game out? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, two all with four or five minutes to go. You know, we should we should see the game out and draw it at the end of the day. I think, you know, I don't think they can score two goals. Obviously, Jorginho's goal was, uh, was lucky. Um, but... You know, they, they had a lot of the ball in the second half and they kept putting pressure on us. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's disappointing at the end of the day. You mentioned the word luck there. Leon Bailey had, I think it was saved by Imran Ramsell onto the bar at the end. On another day, if luck had been on your side? Yeah, that I in? think so. It's just fine margins, isn't it? Um, another day that goes in and, um, yeah, it's 3-2 and we see the game out, but um, it wasn't meant to be. And um, it's a shame that we, we've lost here again. Yeah, they put up a good fight, but they've conceded 11 goals in the last three games. No wins in three. It's going to be a big concern for Unai Emery, Joe. Mm. But how do you think he'll reflect on that overall performance? He'll, listen, they've, they've pushed the team sitting at the top of the league all the way, right to the 94th. I thought they was combative in midfield. I think, you know, they just get punished by individual errors at the back. You know, we said um, first goal, we thought Tyrone Mings could have done better with Saka. Do you think it works with Buendia and Coutinho, I, both of them in the same team? Can you make that work? No, I, I, you, I, I certainly think you can. I don't think it's sustainable for them to be on the pitch for the whole 90 minutes every every game together, but they've both got a part to play for this Villa team. And he's shuffling his pack. He made all these substitutions today. The, the concern for me, I, I don't think he dealt with this, this side of the pitch, Saka and Ben White. If he would have done that earlier, I think he may have gone with a back five, put Luca Digne on early, I think it maybe could have been different. But it's back to the drawing board for Emery. Yeah, tough day for them. It's been a brilliant game, though, here at Villa Park. We're all off for a lie down. Martin, thank you for your very lively company today. <laughs> Peter Joe, thank you very much. Arsenal are back on the top of the pile. Can City respond against Forest today? That's one of six three o'clock kickoffs. And we're going to hand you over to BT Sports Score now, who will be taking you through all of those games. Danny and Jules, it's all yours. Thank you, Lindsay. Yeah, what an end to the